Hey, it's Jared. Today we're gonna connect Zapier to Notion to automate some stuff. This is amazing that Zapier now works with Notion and we're able to connect other apps to Notion and automate things that used to be kind of a pain. So Notion's fantastic, but it doesn't do everything the best. It's definitely not the best use for a calendar and you know, I so I use Google Calendar, I use Todoist for tasks still because just getting into Notion sometimes can be a little bit of a, of a process that slows things down for me but I like using Notion because I can connect everything and everything is interlinked. So now that we have access to Zapier, we can connect Zapier and connect other apps to Zapier so that it pushes that stuff into Notion so that we don't have to do double entry. Double entry is something that's plagued me for the last year or more that I've been using Notion. And now with, of course, these Zapier integrations, I haven't had to deal with that nearly as much. So today we're gonna set up a zap that's going to connect Google Calendar to a calendar within Notion. So every time a new item is created, it's going to push that to Notion and automatically populate it. And this is fantastic because for me, who logs all of my interactions in my interactions calendar, which uh, I'll, I'll talk about in another video, um, this is fantastic. No more double entries. I just uh, after my interaction have to go in and kind of fill in some of the other areas that I uh, that I utilize in that interactions calendar. So we're gonna set up a page first that's gonna be our calendar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit at and type in Google Calendar Zapier demo and I'm gonna create a new page and we'll open that page. Now this page needs to have a database on it so I'm just gonna put a calendar database there and that's really all that I need to do. Next, we're gonna go over to Zapier, zapier.com, create an account. It's free to try a couple of zaps, and then once you, you know, fall in love with Zapier and realize that you wanna automate everything, then you end up having to pay for Zapier. I've got a link down in the description for you below to where you can sign up and get access to Zapier. And so once you have an account created, we're gonna to need to click Create Zap, and so keep in mind that on my page I'm providing, uh, on Notion, I'm providing you a template to use here and also the zap. So if you don't feel like setting all of this up, you can actually just download the zap that I have already created into your Zapier account and then just configure it by setting up and connecting your Google Calendar and connecting it to your Notion account. So if you want the quick and easy, go down to the link down in the description below and you can get access to that. So I'm gonna type in Google Calendar here to get Google Calendar, and so that's great. I need to choose an event that triggers this whole thing to happen, and that's gonna be a new event. So there's new and updated event, which that would be ideal if it was new or updated event. But the problem with the integration with Zapier and Notion is that Zapier can either create new entries or it can update existing entries, and you have to have separate zaps for that, which is kind of frustrating, but it just is what it is. So even though there's a new or updated event, it's not gonna work with Notion right now at the time that I'm recording this, uh, but you'll wanna choose new event. And you'll notice that it says instant next to it. Instant means that as soon as Zapier receives the information, it's gonna send that immediately right to Notion and enter that as a new database item, which is pretty much instant. Uh, free accounts I don't think have access to instant, and you can see that not every trigger is an instant trigger as well. So I'm gonna click New Event and then click Continue. You can see that I need to connect it to a Google Calendar account. This is where you will log into your Google account or whatever calendar app you're using and connect it. So I've already done that. So you can see that my Google Calendar is linked up right here. So I've chosen the correct account. And under Manage Connected Accounts, you can actually connect multiple accounts. So if you have more than one, um, if you have more than one calendar under different email addresses, you can connect additional accounts and, uh, and set up additional zaps to bring in everything into one calendar within Notion, which also is absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna click Continue, and then I need to choose the calendar that I want to sync. So I'm gonna choose that calendar and hit Continue. So I need to test that trigger to make sure that it's pulling in the right information, so I'll click on Test Trigger, 
and it's going to bring in a bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense but you can see that it's bringing in the last calendar item that I added and so I can see that under summary and location and all of that stuff so I can see that this is correct even though all of this information here looks a little bit crazy. I'm going to hit continue and now is where we're going to connect to Notion. So I'm going to type in Notion and you can see it's in beta because all of this stuff is in beta so um, but it, for me it's been working pretty well you can see that my Notion account is already connected. Now your Notion account won't be connected, so you're gonna have to go through a little bit of a process to set up a connection. When you click on Connect Notion, a pop-up window is gonna come up and it's gonna ask for a code. So what we need to do through a web browser is go to Notion uh, and log in. This has to be done through a web browser right now and make sure that you're on the right workspace. Scroll down uh, to Settings and Members and then you'll see a section called integrations. You'll see a section called develop your own integrations. You can see that I have a Zapier integration that I've created here, but you won't have anything. So you're gonna click on create new integration and I called mine Zapier integration. I uh, could upload the Zapier logo to make it easier to identify. You then need to associate that to a workspace. And you can see I've got two different workspaces, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's associated to the correct workspace. If you have multiple workspaces, you're gonna to need to create multiple Zapier connections. So I'm just gonna call this one Zapier Connection Demo and click Submit. And you can see here that it comes with an integration token. That is the token that we're going to need to, to enter into that pop-up box over at Zapier. And you'll wanna make sure that it's set to internal integration. Um, public integration, I wouldn't recommend that one. You wanna leave it in an internal integration so um, that way it's not uh, uh, making that this API connection publicly available and then people if they somehow guessed your secret code or got access to your secret code could get access to all of your um, stuff. So you'll want to go and get that secret code and then copy and paste it back into um, that, that pop-up window that came up and once you do that Zapier is connected and you're ready to go. You should be at this stage right here where it says choose app and event notion and then the next thing will be action event. Now you can see there is not a lot. There is create and update. This is what I was talking about earlier. We can create a database item or we can update it, but we can't do both at the same time or update if already present, which is what I would love. I would love for it to be able to check and see, oh hey, there's already um, that entry there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and update it. But there isn't that type of level of integration yet. So we'll choose create database item and then click continue. Here's where you choose your Notion account. Um, that was not earlier in the step. This is where you choose your Notion account and I can connect multiple accounts. And so just to show you what that pop-up looks like, um, if I go here to this and click on add connection and then do a search for Notion, here's the pop-up that I will get. And all I do is put in my code that I that I generated over on the Notion website and hit yes and it will connect everything and then I'm good to go. So then I'll choose my account. You should see a Notion account populated here. We'll click continue. Here's where you choose your database. Now if you haven't done the next step then you're not going to see anything in here and you're going to think it's not connecting. I don't have any databases. This is weird. So you actually have to share your database to Zapier, uh, and I'll show you how to do that now. So we'll go to our page, and this is on a per database level. So this is a, a page that is a database, so it's not actually a page, it's just a database. Um, and you can only do this with databases. So we'll go to share, we'll um, go to invite, and you can see here that I have Zapier connection and I'll click Invite, and now the Zapier connection is connected. If we go back to Zapier and hit Refresh, or well, let's just go to Load More, it should go and load, uh, let's refresh fields. And if for some reason something gets stuck, 
It is actually safe on Zapier just to hit the refresh button. It saves your state and uh, reloads everything. And so now I can come in here and there we go. Now we've got the Google Calendar Zapier demo and it's gonna populate all of the fields that we uh, have in that demo. So right now we just have name, tags, and date, and then content. And you can see uh, here if we add a view, let's just go and add a table view really quick. All we have is name, date, and tags. We haven't added anything here yet. So what are some things that show up uh, when you enter a new calendar entry? Well, you have the title of the calendar, you have the date, you have the location, you have uh, the notes and invitees. So there's lots of different things that you have. So we have name, we have date, uh, tags we can leave because maybe we'll want to categorize these. Um, I can put location and we'll just go with those. So I added a couple of items and now I can refresh fields and this should populate the location. So for name, let's go and look for name. We want summary and you can see it's pulling in information from my actual calendar so I can make sure that I'm aligning these correctly. So we'll choose uh, the summary as the name. Um, under the date, we'll wanna choose the event begins. Under location, I can put location. And then under content, I get show all options and I can look for description. And so description is what would give us the notes section or the description of the calendar item. And then we hit continue. So now is where we test this. Now this particular calendar item has a name, it has a date, it has a location, but it doesn't have anything in the description, so it's not gonna populate that area. But I do want to test and continue. It says the database item was sent to Notion just now. So now if we go over and look at Notion, you can see we have the name, we've got the date, we've got the location, and if I go back to our calendar view, and then go to next month where that was, you can see I have my entry. So now every time that I add a new item to the calendar, so uh, if I bring up my calendar and add a test entry for tomorrow, make sure that the right calendar is selected, it should not take long before we get that item updated to the list. Of course, I do need to turn the zap on, so I made a mistake there. Once you are good to go, you need to turn your zap on in order for it to be working. And then we can come back over and within a small amount of time, we should get our item added here to our database. So the instant, of course, is going to be the instant that Zapier has that information, it's gonna process it. Of course, there's the time in which things have to sync to Google Calendar, and because I used a third-party app here, uh, I may need to refresh my calendar, and, uh, and then that's gonna push out that data to Google Calendar, and then Zapier will get a hold of that data and push it in to Notion. So this still could take a few minutes, even though it says it's instant. Uh, but as you saw, when we pushed our test through, things are working. And so, um, as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna make all of this available as templates for you so that you can just get it put in and get it connected and give it a try. Uh, you could follow along with this tutorial, but if you'd prefer templates, I have those for you, including the Zapier, uh, the template for Zapier as well. I have a lot of templates available for Notion. So make sure to click on the link below. You can see all of the templates that I have available and choose from the ones that you want and give them a try. I also have a Notion course that I'd love for you to check out if you wanna learn how to master Notion. That's linked down below also. But that's gonna do it for today. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope that it helped you automate something today. If so, let me know what you automated down in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time. Take care.